What's going on everybody? Grim Repair here. I'm going to show you how I made that customizable door chime. Uh, I'm going to show you that the thing is real and that it does fit inside the box. First thing you're going to want to do is find your door chime module. It's the thing making noise. And unplug it. There we go. Now I'm going to take it inside and show you how to build it. If this video helps you out, be sure to subscribe. Tools you're going to need for this are USB to mini USB cable, a helping hand to help you solder, a drill, and on this I have a 1 16th size drill bit, a hot glue gun, a soldering wand, A Dremel. I got a couple different wire strippers here. We'll be using them for different things. You could just use basic ones if that's all you have. A pair of tin snips. Some nipping pliers. Solder. We've got the real thin solder here. It's easier to work with on the small stuff. Heat, sh heat shrink tubing and some good electrical tape. The supplies you're gonna need are one single pole double throw re relay, 12 volt. There's the part number there, and it looks like this. It's got five pins on it. You're also gonna need a quarter watt, 10,000 ohm resistor, and a 2N2222 transistor, some really thin gauge braided wire, and this is the programmable indicator speaker here. It looks like this, and here there's where you plug in the USB to put the 30 second sound clip on it. And here's the part number for this. And of course, you're going to need your chime module from your car. These are GM chime modules. This one is an older style one. There's a little bit of a size difference. It's a little bit wider, but it's not as tall. And I, I don't like working with these ones as much. They're a little bit more of a, a hassle. They both plug in the same. So if you can get one of these, they don't all have these extra wires on them. Some of them, they just look like this. Um, but if you get the taller one, it's a lot easier to work with. It just opens right up and this pops right out. So I like these better. And I'm gonna be showing you how to use this one. It's gonna be pretty much the same for the older style, but these are easier to work with. Here's the wiring diagram that I've drawn up this is what's going to be inside of the chime module and this here is the pinout for the module itself it goes a which isn't used there's a blank space there b c d the other side is h g f e and this pinout here is looking at it like this like it's plugged into it and then it runs to the relay here and it goes to the speaker and it's running through this transistor here and it goes to the negative side of the speaker. This diagram is going to be put up on my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash grim repairs with an S at the end. If you're so go like my Facebook page. Now I was able to figure out what pin goes to what real quick and easy because I have a dealer service manual for one of my Camaros. Here's where the chime module plugs in and here are the pins. They're, they're labeled H, A, G, B, F, C, E, D, just like I got it on the uh, diagram that I made. <clears throat> so you're going to take, you're going to look at the pinout, and then you're going to go to this other page here. And this is what they're calling an audio alarm assembly, and it tells you where F, G, E, B, and all the pins go to. If you don't have a General Motors vehicle, 
vehicle, you can go out to your car with a meter and figure out which pins go where. But we're just going to work with the diagram that I drew because it's, it's a little bit easier to understand. Pin D is a positive 12 volt signal coming from the headlight switch when the headlights are on and it runs through this 10,000 ohm resistor into the transistor and the transistor clicks the ground signal over onto the negative side of the speaker. And then we have the negative that comes from the key being inside the steering column. It grounds it out when it's just sitting in there and there and the ignition isn't on. And that's going to the ground side of the speaker, bypassing all of this. And then this relay over here is just here to shut down the positive side of the speaker when the ignition is turned on. All right, so that's the explanation of the circuit. We're going to get the chime module out, and we're going to open it up. All right, now that we got that opened up, we're just gonna pull that up on the top and slide it out. I'm gonna take my tin snips and I'm gonna cut above the higher pins. The pins on this side go up higher than the pins on that side, but we need most of these pins. So we're gonna cut above those. And we're going to get this out of the way. We're going to go ahead and remove this transistor here with our nipping pliers. Cuts it down real low. Then we're going to remove this resistor that's sitting in here. So we don't need that either. What we're left with is just these pins that are going to plug into the car. So now if you look at this diagram, Two of these pins are for seatbelt indicators, and I'm not going to have a seatbelt indicator. Um, if I want my seatbelt on, I remember to put it on. I've never said, oh, thank goodness my car is telling me to put that on, otherwise I'd have forgotten. You could retain these if you got some kind of a timer relay, but I don't have one and I don't really see a need to. So that would be this pin and this pin right here that we are not going to be using. What I'm gonna do is just color them in with a Sharpie so I remember that I don't need them and it makes it easier. All right, so now I have to drill some holes into these terminals so that I can slide the wire through it and solder it to the connection. And the way I do that is I just stick this inside the pages of a phone book and it kind of holds it and I can drill right through it and I'm not gonna hurt anything. And when you do it, you want to get the hole as high up on these terminals as you can because when you slide it back into the box, if it's not high enough, it's going to get caught on the plastic when it slides back in. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And remember that we aren't using these two seat belt terminals. All right, there we go. We'll be able to slide our wiring in through those and solder the connections. All right, so we're going to cut five or six pieces of wire here, about five or six inches.
And this was real thin wire because I got to fit it into those tiny little holes and there's not a lot of space inside of the chime module. You want to use braided wire. I think this is actually speaker wire. And then we're going to strip the end off. <coughs> just about a centimeter on, on one end. And we're probably gonna trim these down. We don't have a lot of room to work with, so we wanna keep it as clear as we can. You wanna make sure you're using a rosin core solder. There's gonna be links in the description to all the supplies that you're gonna need. The thinner, the better for this. And we're gonna pre-tin the ends of all these wires. And now we're going to do the same thing on the holes we made over here. Alright, now that they're both pre-tinned, we're going to go ahead and attach the wiring. When you slide it through the hole there, you want to make sure that it isn't touching the other pin on the other side. <laughs> Since this one is an unused seat belt indicator pin, I'm probably just going to remove it. But if you go under the underside there and it's touching, take a flathead screwdriver or some small tweezers and you can just bend it up out of the way. And we're just going to go through and do that on all of the pins that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll see you at the next step. For this last pin here, since it just goes from the D pin straight into a resistor, I'm just going to slide the resistor into that instead of running wire to a resistor. I'm going to go ahead and nip that excess piece off. All right, now that we've got all our wires soldered into the input pins, we're going to slide some heat shrink down to cover up any exposed wiring. And you don't need much. You just want it to be a little bit bigger than the wiring and you slide it over all right the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make room for all of this inside of this box here and we're gonna do that by pulling out the centerpiece all right we're gonna remove it with the drum and we're gonna use one of these bits here link in the description All 
All right, now that that's smoothed out, we've got as much room as we're gonna get inside this box. We're gonna go ahead and pop this back in there like this. And it's going in all the way and it's not getting hung up. So we got our holes high enough soldered into there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these ears on this speaker just to give us a little extra room. And we're going to mount the speaker like this and you want to take note where this mini USB terminal is because you're going to cut a slit in the side of the box so that you can reprogram it if you want to without having to remove it. So I'm just going to mark the box here and we're going to dremel out a little slit there. All right, put it back in there and make sure that there's enough ground out for you to get to it. And there is. All right, so here's how everything is gonna be situated in the box. So you can see that everything is going to fit. And you're gonna wanna use as little wire as you can we made these a little bit longer because we can always cut them later. But what I do is I take them to the far corner of the box and I'm gonna cut them. Well, you're also gonna have to go around the speaker here. So you wanna go around the speaker and to the far corner of the box. And that's about how long your wires need to be. So we can cut quite a bit off of those. And then we're gonna solder them up according to the wiring diagram here. And we need to put in the transistor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And after it's all wired up and soldered together, we're gonna take the hot glue gun and put some glue in here in this corner and put a little bit down in here so things don't move around. All right, so I've snipped the wires a little bit shorter. I went around the speaker and made sure to tuck them down because that's where you're gonna want them when we're done. So they're a little bit extra, but not a lot because we need all the room we can get. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace the box. Pull everything out. And I'm going to solder it all together. And I've also color coordinated this top, uh, the top of this relay, so that it makes a little more sense with the diagram. Because normally when they give you a relay pinout, the view is from the bottom, and I found that to be a little bit confusing. So you got orange, red, black, and red, and it corresponds over here with the diagram. Go ahead and print out that diagram from my Facebook, facebook.com slash grim repairs with an S.
you got to be really careful that you don't solder these two pins together. They're really close together. And they're tiny. I'm going to let those two cool and then we're going to try and squeeze them away from each other and then heat shrink around both of those terminals. Alright, those two are not touching and now we're going to slide the heat shrink up the wire. don't get the relay too hot it is plastic they also have some of this liquid electrical tape that you can put on afterwards it says it takes four hours to dry though now we have to run our power wire this one here to the other side of this relay slide it down the wire Very tedious working with these tiny little pins. All right, now that we've got this all wired up according to this diagram, we're going to test the circuit before we cram it into this box and glue it down. We wanna make sure it works. So what we're gonna do, you can use a nine volt, but I have a 12 volt battery here that I'm gonna use. You're going to put positive to the C terminal, negative to the F terminal, and, and that power and ground has to always be there. And then you're going to put power on the D terminal, positive voltage, to test that it's going to come on when the headlights are on. And then you're going to take, you're going to leave that on there, and you're going to take another positive voltage to the H terminal, and it should shut off. And then you're going to take you're going to take the positive off of both of those and you're going to run a ground to the B terminal that way you know that it's going to come on when the key is left in the ignition I'm going to go ahead and, and demonstrate that real quick but that's what I'm doing all right we're going to put the negative on the negative that always has to be there and we're going to put the positive on the positive that always has to be there and then we're going to jumper it to the headlight terminal and it should come on all right so now it's it's on with the headlights and now when we turn our ignition on it should go off so i need to test that by running another jumper to the ignition terminal and it should go off and it did and so now I'm going to take all that off positive and negative that have to be there both have to be there and then I'm going to jumper from the negative terminal which is terminal F to terminal B which is if which is the ground that comes on when you leave your keys in the ignition so it should come on all right circuit tree is good now we're gonna stick it in the box and glue it down and I'm gonna make another video showing you what free software to download and how to program the indicator It'll be somewhere here on the screen. And we've got our liquid electrical tape around all of the exposed connections so that they don't touch each other. And it goes like this.
And we're gonna slide the speaker down in there, move all the wiring and the transistor out of the way. Before we slide that speaker down in there, I'm gonna put a couple holes in the box to give us a little bit better sound. Some of those holes got sealed up when we scraped out the plastic. The plastic kind of melted and filled them in. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Just gonna use the Dremel bit. Get all the wiring out of the way. I'm gonna line up the hole with the USB port there on the side. And now we're gonna drop the relay down in there. You want to plug in your hot glue gun get that thing ready to go now it's just finagling all these wires out of the way all right so you want to hold that make sure that doesn't move and it's lined up with the uh, USB port there and just start putting some hot glue down there make sure the hot glue doesn't seep out in front of your USB port and put some back here where the relay is and you're gonna have to hold it there for a couple minutes you don't want it moving that's a lot of glue that needs to dry and I'd go ahead and put a little bit here to hold this board in Let gravity help you keep it there. Hold it there for a few minutes and do the other side. So I'm gonna put some here on the other side of this speaker just to hold it down. All right, hold that still so it can dry and you'll be able to close the box down. I'm having to move the speaker down a little bit because it's getting in the way of the hinge. So when you glue it down, just glue it down a little bit lower don't push it all the way against the upper wall. There you have it. High five, you did it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.